SMH or SOX ETF? Which one should you choose? These are two great ETFs for exposure to the semiconductor space. SMH from VanX and SOX from BlackRock. Which one should we choose? Welcome to another episode of the MD Investor, where we will compare SMH versus SOX ETF. Before we jump into my computer, just remember, this video is for educational purposes only, and I'm a regular guy on YouTube just giving my opinion. Without any further ado, let us jump into my computer. So, here we are on the ETF.com website, and we're going to compare the semiconductor ETF SMH to the semiconductor ETF SOX. So, SMH is the VanEck semiconductor ETF, and SOX is the semiconductor ETF from iShares. They have both been doing excellent. So, honestly, either way, you can't lose. SMH is on the left, and SOX is going to be on the right. So, SMH and SOX, they're both trading easy for about $220. Uh, SMH for about $221.40. Socks were about $218.92, both marginally up, less than a percent over the last trading day. SMH is offered by VanX, and SOX is offered um, by BlackRock. They have the same exact expense ratio of about 0.35%, meaning you're going to pay about $35 for every $10,000 invested annually. Assets on the management, SMH has the edge of about 18 $1.4 billion of assets on the management and SOX has about $12.5 billion of assets on the management. SMH has been in existence since 2011. SOX has been in existence since about 2001. So SOX has a longer history. Average daily volume, SMH trades about $1.8 billion per year. SOX about $845 million. So SMH is uh, more active in terms of trade. They both track different index. The SMH tracks the MVIS US listed semiconductor 25 index and SOC tracks the ICE semiconductor index. Number of holdings, um, number, number of holdings, SMH has about 26 holdings. SOC had about 31 holdings. Let's look at the performance, right? Which is what we are mainly interested in. So over the last year, right, the May 23 to May 2024, uh, SMH is the light blue, SOX is the dark blue. So over the last year, SMH returned about 77%, 77.71% over the last year, which is tremendous. SOX had a great one-year return as well. 59.3%. Over the last month, SMH is down about 3%. And SOX is down about 3.25% over the last month. Year to date, SMH is up about 25%. While SOX is up about 13.9%. That discrepancy is probably due to... The, that discrepancy is probably due to NVIDIA. Because SMH has a larger portion that discrepancy in the year-to-date return is probably from nvidia because nvidia is more highly represented in smh as we'll see when we go to the uh holding so we see the one-year return of so we see the one-year return is about 77 percent for smh which is crazy and for SOX is about 60 percent um the three-year return i need to analyze the three-year return for smh is about 21.3 percent and it's about 15.79 percent for SOX. The five-year return is about 31% for SMH and about 26.9% for SOX. And the 10-year return for SMH is about 27.15% and about 25.2% um, for SOX. So great return on both of them, but you think SMH has the uh, edge in terms of return. Um, we said the expense ratio is about the same, 0.35%. And uh, SMH has uh, 26 holdings. And SOX about 31 holdings. Average daily volume with it, uh, uh, estimated more highly uh, traded, right? Uh, almost $2 billion. As opposed to uh, 
45 million dollars for stocks number of holdings top 10 holdings um smh um nvidia is the largest holding representing about 24.5 percent nvidia is also in stocks it's also top holding but it's only about 10 percent so when nvidia really goes up which has been doing great lately smh is gonna uh go up as well and that probably represents why the return is better now second holding is taiwan semiconductor which is a which is a semiconductor company in taiwan and that's 9.78 percent so you get a little international flavor with smh the second, um, if you look at uh, Taiwan Semiconductor holding in socks, it's only 3.92%. So not as heavy, right? And you'll see most of the holdings in socks are U.S. companies. But uh, with SMH, you have a little more exposure to uh, international company, okay? Um, you have our Broadcom is about 5.9%. Advanced Micro Devices, 5.68%. Uh, ASML, about 5%. Uh, percent. And then LAM Research, Applied Materials, Intel, uh, Qualcomm is in the 4% range. Um, in SOX, you see Advanced Micro Devices is a little higher percentage, about 9%. Broadcom, higher, percentage of 8.91%. Right? Whereas Broadcom is not even, Broadcom is 8.91% in socks, but only about 5.93% in Broadcom. That's going to be the major difference. You see, you see Intel here on socks of 5.16%. So the Marvell, 4.12%. Um, um, Marvell is not even here in the top 10 in. SMH. So the major difference you can see that NVIDIA is a law is almost a quarter of SMH and it's only 10% in NVIDIA and Taiwan semiconductor is a smaller percentage holding. So so if you want heavier if you want more exposure to international, go with SMH. If you want less exposure to international companies, then you may go want to go with SOX. Because think about it, right? There's geopolitical tension, and if something was to happen, uh, China takes over Taiwan, for example, and that may affect um, Taiwan Semiconductor. And therefore, if you're overly exposed to it, you may be adversely affected. So something, could, so something to consider. In terms of, in terms of our sector. Both companies are about the same in terms of uh, electronic technology, right? In the uh, mid 80s, uh, SOX, uh, 88%, and SMH, 85%. So they were both very similar in terms of, uh, in terms of um, their sector. Electronic technology is the largest sector. Uh, producer manufacturing is, again, very similar. Technology services, SMH uh, have uh, almost a 6% exposure. SOX does not in terms of technology services. Price to earnings ratio is about the same, right? 47 to 45, which means how much are you paying for $1 of earnings, right? A relative expense. So they are very similar. Very similar, but with socks, you're paying a little less, only $45 for every dollar of earnings. So socks are about 4% holding of mid-cap. So that would explain some of those companies that we are not really um, that familiar with, like Marvell Technologies, which can come in handy because if those companies begin to blow up, then you have exposure to them, right? So you'll see a company like Marvell Technology. Um, we don't see, we don't see it here in the top ten, but it's here in the top ten 
for socks, right? Um, it may be an FMH lower down, but here you have a 4% um, exposure to it. And if that company blows up, you get the benefit of it. The FMH holding about 79% in the U.S., whereas SOX is about 85% in the U.S., right? Taiwan represents about 12.5% of FMH exposure, right, with Taiwan Semiconductor. And SOX is only about 5% exposure, right? And this is the Netherlands, um, represents about 7.9% of FMH and about 8% of SOX. So in terms of developed markets, um, we see that um, FMH is about 87% developed markets, which is primarily uh, U.S., and SOX is about 94% developed market, mainly U.S. dominated. SMH is about 12% exposure to emerging market, which is probably include like Taiwan, and SOX about 5% exposure, okay? So final break. I don't believe you can really go wrong. They are two great ETFs. Um, SMH is uh, a little uh, newer. Inception data that are in 2011. Sox, uh, in certain days in 2001, is a little older, but I believe you have exposure to the uh, semiconductor ETF space. Um, the returns are great. If you want more um, U.S. Uh, concentration, you may go with Sox. If you want uh, more diversification in terms of like countries, you may want to go with SMH. The expense ratios are about the same. So, yeah, I don't, I don't believe you can really make a mistake they are both great me personally um the return for fmh is very uh, appealing um it does have a higher uh concentration in nvidia which is driving the growth if you're okay with having 20 percent plus of your etf in one company you may want to go with that if you are not and would like it to be more spread out, you may want to go with uh, socks. So, what's the final verdict? SMH or socks? Two great ETFs. And don't even worry about it. You really cannot make a mistake, right? If you go with SMH, you're going to win. And if you go with socks, you're going to win. Some of, the things you may, some of the things you may want to consider, right? Concentration. SMH has over 20% exposure to one company, that is NVIDIA. And if you're okay with that, uh, NVIDIA has been doing great, and that's why the returns are better in SMH. If you're not okay with having one company representing over 20% of your ETF, then you may want to go with SOX. Um, if you're okay with Jeff, if you're okay with having all of your exposure, Primarily in one country, U.S. focused, you may want to go to SOX. Um, SMH has about 11%. SMH has about 11% exposure to Taiwan Semiconductor, right? With geopolitical tensions on the rise, if China were to take over Taiwan, that may affect your holdings and that may affect your return in SMH. There's something to consider. The expense ratio is about the same, right? 0.35%. So um, that's not anything um, to uh, consider because you're going to pay about $35 for every $10,000 invested per year. Um, yeah, but with that, really, um, you're not going to lose either one. All right. So again, the MD Investor was another video to try to increase our financial IQ so we can break the cycle of generational poverty. MD Investor, out.